Mudita does not endorse sideloading applications, but you can proceed at your own risk. Now, if you love the Mudita Compact, but there is just one app that you need specifically in your day-to-day -day life, you do have an option. And that option is to sideload it. Now, if you haven't sideloaded any apps before, I highly recommend checking out other creators who have. For example, I followed the video with Andrew Foltz, and he went through step-by-step -step on how to sideload. And he also showed some of the performances of certain apps. This will give you a better picture of what it's like to sideload onto the compact directly. Now this video will not be showing you how to sideload and if you want to see that, again, check out Andrew's video. I'm going to link it down below and you can check it out there. Now sideloading seems like it's a complicated task, but all in all, it took me about 10 minutes to sideload onto the Mudita Compact. You can go into your settings, activate the developer options, and then you can go from there to install ADB and install the desired app store. I, like Andrew, chose to go with Aurora Store. Aurora Store is like the Google Play Store, but more privacy focused. You have access to all the apps you could possibly need, but with one big caveat. Will those apps be optimized for a small e-ink display? Now, again, Mudita does not endorse this process, and there are some risks involved when sideloading apps onto your device. For example, you may void the warranty of the device, and second, you may brick the device, and third, some apps just might not work. For example, if you have a banking application, there is a chance it might not work on this device depending on whether or not it needs Google services. I know for myself, I have three different banking apps. Two of those apps are fine to be sideloaded because they do not rely on Google services, but I have one app that doesn't work. Even though I've downloaded and installed my banking app, not all the features work as designed. And that's to go with all of the apps I've used so far. Keep in mind, this is a specific type of device. Not only is it an e-ink device, but it is also a smaller form factor than most modern smartphones. It has a 4.3 inch display. When I downloaded my banking app, everything worked perfectly except for additional options such as wire transfers and being able to access certain menu options because I couldn't necessarily see anything and I couldn't access the specific options. But I could see the essentials such as the amount in my bank account. Now there are other apps that work perfectly fine. For example, WhatsApp. WhatsApp is something that I need to communicate with my friends and family, especially being outside the US. I use it a lot for messaging and I was able to connect the account as a primary account and also connect a WhatsApp account as a linked companion device. So both options worked perfectly fine. I was able to see pictures, videos, download those files, and of course, if you're going to make video calls, keep in mind there's only one camera on the device and that's on the back of the device. So if you're looking to have a video conversation face to face, it could get a little bit awkward by having to switch back and forth. You can also download other communication apps such as Signal, Telegram, or your favorite app. Another app I decided to sideload was AntennaPod. I really like some podcasts and I wanted to be able to test out this specific application, I like to use it for streaming as well as downloading podcasts to listen to later offline. All of the features work perfectly fine and I was able to do that with no issues. Another app that I decided to test out was Magic Earth. Now the default app on Medita Compact is okay. You can download offline maps, but I needed more turn by turn directions and more specifically directions for my transit system. Magic Earth just works across more devices I found and I really like this application. I was able to easily navigate with it and use it as intended and it was a great compromise to have it on this device. Now you'll notice that when you download or sideload certain applications, they may not look the way they were intended. 
not only the app itself, but as you can see in the app drawer here, the icons don't match the aesthetic of the device. This is because they did not intend for people to sideload these applications. And again, they do not promote sideloading, but they do understand, of course, that people may do it at their own risk. So if you're looking to have a nice clean aesthetic and you need specific apps, you're not gonna have that option. I even tried sideloading specific launchers to have a more minimalist appearance and those launchers didn't work as well. So there is that caveat. The last app I really wanted to try out was a reading application. Now the Mudita Compact does come with a default e-reader. The e-reader is okay for most cases, but as somebody who's visually impaired, I need to make specific customizations to the e-reader before I can possibly read or see something for a period of time. Normally when I'm reading, I'm using a black background with white text because in contrast, I don't see the text when there's a white background in most cases because my brain just erases it. Gotta love neurological vision issues. But with e-readers, I do see the text and I can read for a period of time. I wouldn't say I could read for hours, but I am able to read better than I would on paper, for example. Another issue is I need to be able to change the font. Many of you might not know, but there are different kinds of fonts and some fonts are more adapted to certain disabilities than others. By default, a lot of font has serifs. Serifs are those little designs on the edge of the letters. And if you have certain neurological conditions or even dyslexia, for example, this could cause additional confusions and make it more difficult to read. I know for myself, the serifs kind of blend together and some letters could look like other letters or I don't see the letters at all. And it's better for me to have no serif or sans serif. And being able to choose the font option gives more accessibility to more variety of people. And the default reading app doesn't have that option to change the specific font. You can change the size. There are three different sizes on the default reading app. But on my personal reading app, I have more of a slider feature where I can go up or in between sizes. And depending on the day, depending on how my vision is that day, I'm able to modify a little bit more precisely. Now, one big caveat about the device in general is that dark mode is a no-go. Unfortunately, I tried it with many different apps and it gives the same kind of effect. If you put anything in dark mode on this device, it gives it a textured background, almost from far away, it looks like it is a leatherette or an animal skin color. And if you go even closer, you can see that it's actually little white dots that gives it that texture. Unfortunately, when you are swiping through a menu or reading something, there will be ghosting. There is no refresh button because this device is not optimized for dark mode. This happens with some devices and you'll notice on other devices, you have a refresh button for this reason, especially for dynamic content or reading with a dark background. Otherwise I can read in the normal mode just fine, but I do like dark mode just out of preference and out of habit of being somebody who's visually impaired. If you watch other reviews of other users who have the Modita Compact, you will see similar feedback as far as apps that won't work or won't work very well, of course. Keep in mind, there's only three gigs of RAM on this device. So if you're looking to game, watch videos, or do anything that's very demanding of the device, it's not going to be optimized for that and it's not going to look good. And unfortunately, you don't have Google services, so YouTube won't work. You'll have to find an alternative method to watch your YouTube videos. I recommend F-Droid and there's a multitude of different apps for that. But again, YouTube does not like that. So I won't go into specific details. In regards to performance of side loading, you will notice that the device will lose a lot more battery life when you side load specific apps, especially those apps that are continually updating. I'm talking about you, WhatsApp. They will eat at your battery life a little bit faster than as if you were using the phone as designed. If you need that specific app, I think it's a fair trade-off, a little bit of battery life for a little bit more usability, but I know some people won't want that and 
you really have to make the choice. Do you need that specific app or do you want to use the device for as long as possible? For example, before I sideloaded any apps, I was getting well over a week of standby battery and using the device every day for music, calls, and texting. After sideloading the apps I had mentioned previously, I'm getting around five days, maybe less depending if I'm reading a lot, but honestly, I think it's still excellent battery life for what you're getting. So overall, if you're going to sideload, you have to make that decision. Is it worth the risk for you? I know for myself, I need specific apps such as WhatsApp, and I'm willing to make that trade off in the risk of potentially bricking my device, of course, or voiding the warranty. But if you're somebody who's not comfortable with sideloading or you don't want to risk it, the device works perfectly fine without any of these additional applications. I know a lot of people really hesitate on certain devices because they need one specific app and there's not a single company out there that has the specific app for everyone's needs. Everyone has something different depending on the country you're living in, depending on your use cases, and depending on really what you need on your device day to day. I think sideloading is a compromise for a larger potential crowd of people who want to use this device, but have a specific app in mind they need to use every day. Do you sideload on your devices? Which app do you actually need every day that's stopping you from getting the device right now? I think a lot of people it's for communication, but let me know down below what yours is. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon.